Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Ravi. I work as data scientist at InMobi Glance. And I'm, over the past few months, I'm an open source contributor at uh, Llama Index. Today, I'll be discussing much about Llama Index, what Llama Index does, and uh, how you can evaluate your QA systems that are built on Llama Index. So to start with, so LLMs are great at uh, various tasks, but how can we integrate LLMs with uh, our own data? The biggest obstacle with the uh, two biggest obstacle with LLMs are the context uh, sizes, 4096 tokens, and then the training data is capped at uh, 2021. And then we have our own private data, even at enterprise level and uh, personal level. Raw files at uh, PDFs, audio files, videos, Excel files, PPTs, vector stores, SQL DPs, and Slack channels, and uh, Notion documents, CRMs as well. So the data sources are uh, across different domains as well. And there are some use cases, interesting use cases that you can do, question answering, summarization, text generation as well. So how can you collect, connect LLMs with all these different data sources? One way is if you have something on Notion and you have uh, some text, include the text into your uh, input prompt on GPT-3 along with your query. And it can answer the, your question based on the text. But the problem is the text always doesn't limit in uh, 4096 tokens. So how can we overcome that obstacle? One is ex using external data sources and other is limitation of tokens of 4096. That's where, yeah, as I said, you need to de deal with long context. And as well, there are a lot of um, very large databases of uh, GBs and TBs. So, so how do you overcome that? That's where Llama index does. It acts as an interface between your external data sources as well as your foundational models. There are many interesting uh, knowledge intensive LLM applications in various domains such as sales, marketing, recruiting, developers, legals, and finance. And in every domain, there are different data sources and many LLMs. So Llama index has an, acts as an interface between different data sources as well as LLMs. There are primarily three components in Llama index. One is your data connectors, Llama hub, and then data indices, and then there is a query engine. So what Llama hub has is various data connectors where you connect, load your data in various resources. We have data connectors so that we can load all those data in the format that Llama index need. And the data indices structure those data for different use cases and different uh, indices mainly uh, chunk the data into different nodes. And then there is a query engine, which does response synthesis once you input, uh, uh, connect your external data with all those indices. So how does an index work? There are a lot of indices uh, in Llama index, simple vector index, list index, keyword table index, tree index, but primarily uh, I focus more on simple vector index and list index uh, with time constraint. The main concept is node and then output response instances. Node is about, you have a lot of uh, big chunk of document. And what Llama index does is it uh, chunks all, uh, the full document basically into different chunks based on the uh, chunk size you give. And each chunk is called as node. And based on uh, the query, it retrieves some nodes, either through similarity or based on keywords as well. And then on top of that, a response system happens. So as you can see, we are given a document, each node, uh, each uh, a whole document is divided into chunks and or else you can call as nodes and they are connected as per documents. And uh, yeah, so once you form the index, these nodes are formed, I mean, based on chunking. And then for querying, the usual without any parameters, so the usual thing is if you, uh, if you query, it takes each node first and then tries to pass each node to the LLM and then pass query uh, to uh, along with node and LLM. And then uh, the response since this happens, even you can, you can even filter uh, particular nodes based on uh, keywords, like here there is population or else uh, even uh, based on your embedding scores of embedding similarity between your query and the node information. 
so what exactly is there in the response synthesis so there is a cre create and refine approach what happens is first it takes uh, whatever uh, data is available in node 1 along with query and it tries to answer let's say a1 next it takes a1 your query and then information in node 2 and asks it to refine it, its own answer based on the new information of node 2 this process continues in for all the nodes it has and then the final answer is generated for your there are multiple use cases semantic search or question answering and then summarization as you can see just with four lines of code your uh, qa system is being built just import simple vector index and then simple directory reader simple directory reader is some kind of a wrapper for loading your data and then uh, chunking the data and then you create a index on top of those documents and then start querying here i have just shown an example of one of the uh, uh, i'll be showing the demo later yeah just query it and then the response this is the response you get and then even for summarization there is a wrapper with uh, different uh, response mode tree summarize you can just ask it to summarize in uh, some bullet points it starts summarizing it good we are it's very easy to build a qa system with just four lines of code probably on top of that building app but how good it is you really don't know uh, how good the responses are because you can't just go through every uh, response coming from the user queries and then evaluate it so that's where the evaluation system uh, becomes interesting and there is a need for evaluation and then even for evaluation you need questions as well as responses but questions you can't go through every document and create questions out of it what you can do is you can ask you give document to the index and then ask gpt3 to generate the questions these are different questions based on a document i have shown which is there is a wrapper for uh, generating questions based on the document and then uh, directly generates a question and then once you once you have uh, questions the next is you need the response and then evaluation based on the response notes the uh, source notes so there are different kind of evaluators one is response evaluator there is a, then there is query response evaluator as well what happens in the response evaluator is uh, when you query uh, when you give a query to the index it gives response as well as source notes what i mean by source notes is what is the source information on which it generates a response so given a query and then index data structure it gives a response object which has response text as well as response source source information and then we can ask uh, gpt gpt4 to uh, compare the response text as well as response source whether they are matching accordingly or not if the response uh, output is no that means it is just hallucinating and uh, whatever the answer is coming in it's not as per the uh, source note it selected but sometimes the response comes based on the uh, source notes as well but the problem is the it can't be uh, in line with whatever query you asked so that's when we built query response evaluator it doesn't only take response text as well as response source source node it even takes query and then ask based on this query and response node that this response ma matches if the answer is no then the whole response whatever it generated is totally hallucinated or something else if it if it is yes, you can direct, you can confirm that the generated answer is correct but when you there is third one which is source context evaluation when you query on a large databases the source notes are from different documents so i want to show to users what are different uh, documents i need to come uh, based on the source notes so instead of evaluating only one source uh, getting answer from at the end on basis of all source notes i give query and response and then source note information for uh, all together and get whether this particular source note is in line with the query and response so the third, first and third chunks are getting the no answer and only the second chunk is s so to the user you can only show the document 
which ha has this source node too. That's where you can have a good uh, user experience. A quick demo of uh, how to do this evaluation. Yeah. So I have uh, some essay polygram um, text in data folder. All I'm doing is run some queries on top of this. So this just reads the data and uh, have, get the documents and then data generator uh, reads them. And then this generates the questions uh, based on the document. So whatever questions are generated are this. So there are a lot of questions generated, but the default is five, five questions for each chunk. You can even um, uh, parameterize that. There are some questions here. What were the two main things that the author worked on before college and then author used to write programs on IBM 1401. Let's ask with different evaluators we have. I just imported query response evaluator. And then on top of the, I created an index. And then there is some functions to display. So the first question I'm evaluating is what language did the author use to write programs on IBM 1401, 1401. So here it queries and then uh, I ask it to evaluate and then display it. So you can see this is a query and this is the response it generated, but this is the uh, source node information. And then it said that, yeah, these two responses are uh, response and source node are matching. So it says the author was an early version of Photon to write these programs. You can check this somewhere around uh, here. Yes. Sorry. Something like this. So the information is present. So it says, yeah, whatever response is based on source information. And the next question is, what was the author's first microcomputer and what did they use it for? But this time I'm uh, trying to eva evaluate all the source nodes individually. So yes, uh, there is a long chunk of text, but yeah, you can see there is some answer here. So what was the author using about, and this is the first thing uh, was there is AT and programming. And it says yes for this because it has the information in this chunk and for other chunks, it just says no. And uh, no, so you can, uh, while building QA systems, you can just show the first chunk document. That's how it works. And then the current, uh, the evaluation system is being used by Albus. Albus is a Slack A teammate where you can ask questions on your uh, external source documents and that is being currently used for HR systems and recruitments. So uh, I can quickly show uh, the tool as well. Yeah, some of the questions, yeah. So what are the leave policies? Uh, Albus is part of Springworks. So what are leave policies at Springworks? It actually gave uh, based on the internal sources of whatever documents it has, the response and as well as the source here. And even let's say this, how can employees at Springworks schedule time with the CEO? Then it gave some answer and then the source node is present. There are even general questions can be asked in this channel. Yeah, there is chat GPT answer as well as internal source answer where the answer is present and they have even shown the source. Yes, so how does the workflow happen in uh, Albus? So there is a user query and there are index documents. You get response with source node information and goes to evaluator. If the for whatever evaluator, the uh, source node infer, uh, answer is yes. It just outputs uh, those source nodes documents along with response. That's the architecture and workflow. Yes, thanks to Jerry Liu. He is the creator of uh, Llama Index and he helped me a lot in uh, doing all these contributions. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Yes. You talked about the evaluator, but uh, like any automated system, how will you trust it? Even if you are, let's say you are using GPT-4 or something like that, how will you trust that it's evaluating correctly? Uh, 
Yeah, so what we did is we uh, actually did some initial testing with how uh, accurate is this evaluation. With GPT 3.5, there is some kind of hallucination, but more uh, 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 rows of the And then, uh, how these people are, I mean, I understand that there is trust here. So how these people are planning to do this, they are giving an upward or downward from the source information. Based on that matrix, uh, we can know uh, whether the uh, system is doing correctly or not. So based on that upward downward, uh, is the system fine tuning itself? I, I guess it's not fine tuning anywhere. No, it says that whatever source information we are showing is correct or not. So if the more upwards are more, that means the evaluation system is working correctly. So you change the prompts of the evaluation system so that it yeah, gets yeah. more upwards. So initially, uh, I even uh, did, didn't do any problems. I just asked if the magic evaluation. So GPT-4 is able to evaluate without any problem there. But GPT-3.5, I need to do uh, some examples like zero shot or one shot, that's the case in example. Okay, thank you. Hi, Ravi. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, I guess two questions. I'm just summarizing what you said more, more than anything else. Correct me where I'm wrong. Okay. So the first one, what you're doing is um, you are sort of, uh, I mean, when you have a bunch of content, that you want to give to the model uh, without fine tuning, how do you provide that and get it to answer your question? That's your basic uh, thing, what you're trying to do. Now, what you do in this particular case is you do either some sort of dense index or sparse index, query on them, get a bunch of nodes, all of which are possible, having possible content there. See, uh, provide them in series one by one to GPT, get GPT to get the output. And then finally, uh, I mean, uh, over multiple stages, uh, get the answer to be closer to what you want. That is the first sort of part. The second part is now, uh, when you have any answer, I mean, the previous could be an example, but any answer, how do you validate that is the question here. What you do is, uh, given the query, you find, uh, answer either from GPT or from maybe from M uh, querying as well. Once you get that, uh, the next part, you try to generate questions based on them one. And second, then you check whether the question, uh, the question set of questions bar query, is it matching with the answer provided? Uh, if it, if it does, then you, uh, I mean, that's the evaluator essentially, right? So one question really just to you now summarize and end it up is that how do you ensure the questions are good in the first place? Because many a time, at least my experience with GPT is that in, in, in topics, it's a great, it's already trained, really well trained on it, it generally is and tend to do well, but if it's anything outside of that, especially if you have a context, imagine, you know, um, it's very different from the context here. Uh, uh, how, how will the questions be good? And, and maybe my question is more in the line of when should you do fine tuning versus when can you do all this, uh, all these kind of stuff, right? Fine tuning as in uh, improving the model with the, uh, with the, either your own model or with some other mechanism. I, I hope that makes sense. Yes. So to answer the question, uh, I uh, also handling this. So only something. I mean, whatever I have is restrict your answer to the document provided. And one more thing is, if it is really, you can even uh, specify some specific keywords on which you can filter the whole document chunks and only create questions on top of only on those chunks. That way, you can uh, actually limit your uh, set space or chunk space and then generate questions. I forgot the second one. What the second was, uh, once you, I mean, so when you are creating these, it's, I think it is more on this uh, only. Yeah. Yeah. Depends, like, uh, yeah. So when you are able to, uh, so there is one interesting use case. Someone asked, uh, I have customer stack data. And then I want to, uh, basically my LLM has to answer whatever the customer there is some interaction with customers and there are answers available available in the customer data. Uh, data. So the uh, LLM might not always answer it correctly because the uh, information is spread across. Probably in first time there is an answer, but in last time the answer has been probably uh, applicable uh, or maybe in the middle. In those cases, probably the best way to is go for fine tuning your LLM model on your customer data. So that it understands all the differences and then the right one.
uh, so i have a question uh, so from what i understood also like source the uh, document from where you got the answer is one way of uh, asking let's say your model that hey from where did you find this answer and then evaluating on that can we do more or have you tried just curious uh, maybe questioning your model also uh, what what was the reasoning behind answering that and in a way evaluate on basis of that is that even like something possible yeah we can do that so yeah i mean eventually to ask a question it will take some part of the text from the source internet right so yeah. then what we are doing is we are taking the response and then source in the like source or text data on this actually generate answer and then query and ask me to see whether all these are in line or not yeah what you are saying is in the response itself you ask it to reason itself uh yeah more like in this uh, if these things are in line can we add more such points so that we are more sure that everything should be in line like if that makes sense so right now we just say that the response and the source should be in line with each other can we add such more such points and say okay all of these should be in line with each other oh i did try yeah but yeah, okay this case is okay thank you hey ravi ashwin here Ashwin here. Uh, I was just wondering when more people are actually trying to reduce the number of documents that they are searching through, right? Uh, the process that you just showed it actually breaks the documents into uh, multiple nodes and then compares it, and it's sequential, right? You cannot parallelize this. Uh, it doesn't this in increase your inference time because I saw in your Jupyter notebooks that the cell ran for twenty nine seconds or thirty eight seconds, yeah, yeah. and the inference time would you usually expect out of uh, LLMs. Uh, so, uh, what I did, uh, what I did, is for evaluation. Uh, okay. Okay. Only for evaluating. And to upload the document, uh, we have to process it, and then uh, evaluation is completed. Process it, and then the rest, the next query only takes a minute. Next query is taking less than a minute. On, I mean, when it's searching for how many documents? How many documents? What are your so? Our process is uh, to make uh, query. It takes the direct memory and sees the similarity. Right. So probably to all the similarity not to give. Is there anything you, we can do to you know filter out the irrelevant documents? Then do the. Uh, That's what. That's what is there, right? It already filters filters out the irrelevant. Uh, hi. Uh, so uh, right now you are using GPT four as a evaluator. Because uh, it performs well given the query out of uh, rest of the elements present. Yes. So uh, suppose uh, for an example, so GPT-4 has been trained on the context which has present till 2022, suppose or 2021. And now, uh, if I query something which semantic meaning has been changed, suppose I say two uh, plus three is now six, and if I query, then GPT will return five. But now the context of the uh, rules has been changed. Two plus three is six. Then how we are going to validate this? So do we need to uh, change some paradigm since GPT-4 is only been trained on the uh, rules till 2022? So do we need to have some reward model or something like reinforcement learning or some have? We should have a critic model trained on our uh, custom or domain data or custom set of rules. So, there are those tools in new set of tools for the data analytics. So we can include them in the context. Right? Then based on the context, we will understand what is the new rule. We have a very good understanding of it. So the state of the model for a validator is not GPT-4. Rather, it will be a reward model or a critic model that has been trained on our context or a domain data ultimately. Can we say I'm this? Sorry. I'm not aware of uh, those more. Okay. Okay. Uh, no problem. So my second question is uh, regarding the token limit. So we all are aware that uh, when we query, so there is a token limit in all of the LLMs present right now. So suppose we want to query uh, against some uh, set of uh, document, some cell, suppose a list of five pages, and that has a token limit to LLMs. So, how we are going to index that data 
what are the best chunking uh, strategies that would be recommend suppose we want to query something uh, that uh, from a list of five pages so uh, what are the best practices uh, would you recommend to index that document or what are the best chunking uh, methodology would you suggest to do it like for summarization of a five page document so what we can do since uh, it has a token limit so we can chunk it and based on the chunk we can summarize one chunk and feed that summarization to the second chunk and concatenate it like a recursion model so we can get the information and we can query what is the summarization of a whole document so what are the best other uh, chunking methods would you recommend that we can use with gpt index or in a lang chain kind of scenario yeah. so actually i have to say what are you making a summarize every chunk of the whole so uh, we are experimenting one of the uh, methodology is like having a semantic search model and uh, having a fine tuned uh, llms and suppose we have a query so we won't uh, we don't want to hallucinate the llms so what we are doing is like we are querying to our semantic search model and saying that we are that, that we need five top documents based on this query and given that semantic search models response we are feeding the llms with the that uh, output plus our query so it reduces the hallucination hallucination and also does the response source validation as well suppose we want to aaj 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 shan so suppose we want to query something and we don't want llms to hallucinate and we want our source to be intact suppose uh, just given a book so give the response from this book only so we have a semantic search model in our place and we are querying the querying first to our semantic search model and saying based on this query give us five top documents related to that and we are feeding both those this information to our fine tune llms uh, to give us more accurate results but there is one stage where uh, it has been trained on the context same idea is, has been trained on 2022 till context say. so there we realize that we have to fine tune and then we have to keep this but there is one of the challenge that challenges that we are facing is uh, the token limit and losing the context information while chunking so so uh, sometimes we lose the context while embedding in the semantic search model we embed the documents into a data vector database so we suppose for a summarization query so we use this recursion based chunking method to actually summarize a document of suppose 100 pages so uh, just i was asking what are the best uh, methodology is there something in the llama index where we can uh, hold that conceptual information so llama index also is different response for by your so ultimately it's a hit and trial thing to find out the best chunking strategy or uh, yeah Hi Ravi. Hi Ravi. Uh, I have a couple of questions. So the first one is, what is? Uh, can you explain again how one node is formed? And how node is formed? Like, uh, does it simply pick all of the documents from a directory, or uh, is are the documents in a single node semantically similar to each other? 
So the documents in a single note are they similarly are they semantically similar to each other or are they selected at random or something uh, like this? The documents uh, once you have a document, so your document is split across probably let's say two hundred words each. Hmm. So your chunk one has first two hundred words and chunk two has second note two hundred notes and third is next two hundred notes two uh, hundred words. So each chunk is called your Uh, no, and then you can even have a uh, overlap of words between multiple chunks. So there is uh, because of that overlap, that semantic meaning is still carried forward. So the sentence that the final output is only dependent on one node is uh, does that is that true or no? Uh, final output is dependent on whatever uh, similar nodes there of your query. Okay. So when you query. It retrieves uh, what are the most similar nodes that I can get answer from. It say for that query I get top uh, I get top three. So it retrieves those top three nodes and then generates answer by taking this query and then the, uh, those three nodes and generates answer from it. Okay, thanks. Hope you got it. Yeah.